Thomas McVeigh about to enter the cage. Andrew, he fought on a Euro 6, 7, 9, 10. He's back now for the fifth appearance in this cage. Began that run on the first show with a beautiful body kick knockout of Trevor Lee on his debut. That was an exceptional finish. One of my favorite finishes I've seen in this cage, I believe. Good test on the way next for both, to be honest. Yeah. Adam Hanlon, 2-0. Uh, super featherweight. Both oh. guys fought on the last one, the Euro 10, and Hanlon had a good finish over Israel Danby, and McVeigh won a great decision over Harry Thompson. McVeigh in the southpaw stance, and th th this is where he landed that beautiful body kick over Trevor Lee, just, and as I said, those, that open stance I love, because those weapons are, they're so threatening. And uh, a quick turnaround for Chris Fields for right. He was over in Newcastle last night. He was. But, uh, Cornering Leon Hill. A brilliant victory for uh, Leon Hill, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, very efficient, very effective cornering. Leon was, was fighting a very skilled wrestler yesterday yeah. who threw Leon quite a few times. Commonwealth it, Games wrestler and a boxer. Yeah, and in this in the second round, like there was just that's a nice uh, Camaro trap from Thomas McVeigh. If he's able to use it to win the scramble here, that'll be quite nice. So the Hanlon, wizard too. Yeah, Hannon was like a dog with a bone in that though. Ha Hannon got got the best of that transition and got the best of that position, and then at the very last second, McVeigh threw a Camaro grip on. That's at least the third shot below the belt we've seen in this uh, this preliminary card, isn't it? Yeah, at least. But what we, what I saw from that last night was uh, Chris started letting his opponent know how tired he was yeah. from all of the failed takedown attempts. Yeah. And I nearly feel like he started to believe it even more. Yeah. And it was from you could see at one point his uh, his opponent actually turned and said no to Chris, yeah. didn't he? And <laughs> He's not tired, but... And then he didn't from that point on, but it was a mad throw that Leon capitalised against. Your man tried, like, the front suplex, yeah. belly to belly, double overhook suplex. Leon landed in the mount. And a great finish, because he was losing that first round. Yep. Yeah, I had given the first round the other way, but Hanlon has started, started well here, and he's, he's connected now, the hands under that, that, that high crotch, and he's trying to dip now for the ankle pick. He's thinking about this Camaro grip again here. It's such a great weapon in mixed shots. martial arts. Yeah. Even just for reversals. And I'm trying to turn and run the pipe. It's not there. Very fishing for that arm again. It's going third time lucky here. You know, even using that as a deterrent from allowing Adam to connect his hands behind that lead leg is so beneficial for Thomas. Yeah. Like, even if you're not getting the actual Kimura grip. He's put a lot into this takedown attempt, and you know what? He hasn't got it. Reset. I can't really understand. Was there a glove grab or something went on there? I'm Quite not too sure. It definitely wasn't a cage grab anyway. Yeah. From what it might have been a glove grab. Yeah, because we were looking out for it there, thinking that there could have been a cage grab. Hanlon almost pulled his opponent onto a mount. McVeigh did land on the top. But and, and a fair a fair statement from Chris to Aaron Wallace about saying that it's a, a fight-altering situation which is why I think Aaron allowed the opportunity to go back. He Did he just offer him the opportunity to start in the centre there? Off that I'm not glove, sure, I'm not sure, issue. I couldn't tell. But Hanlon expended a lot of energy looking for that takedown unsuccessfully throughout first round. And it'll be interesting to see what he has in the tank going into the second. Yeah, really good defensive defensive grappling from Thomas where he could there, especially when it was attaching to the Kimura. Obviously, if there was an inner, we couldn't see. Mm. Obviously, if there was an inner grip, 
glove grab. Yeah, and that's purely a guess on my half. I, I didn't see a fence grab, and yeah. I didn't see any other infringement, so I'm guessing something along the lines of a glove grab was probably the reason he separated them. And maybe, yeah, maybe it was could have been just a low blow or something, but no one seemed to be in any discomfort or pain, so. Yeah, interesting, really good takedown defense, I have to say, from Thomas McVeigh in that opening round. Very, very impressed. He's the taller, rangier fighter, and I spoke about it earlier. It can be difficult to get the, the hands connected around the back of their legs if they split the base with those longer legs sometimes. Thomas is a good lad. He's very over the last. Oh, a right hand by Hanlon. Caught him circling in that direction. Lovely work. He's in now on that single this time. Yeah, I've, I've He's on the neck, though, Browner. He is, and again, we spoke about a deterrent. It could be enough sometimes to make you just hit the reverse, get back out of that position rather than press forward. Go short. We should go hand to hand here. He's grabbed. Yeah, he's got that really like a choke style grip, hasn't he? And he's trying to drag his opponent he's up. He's, he's got the top. A beautiful guillotine by Thomas McVeigh. Great takedown defense, and he capitalized by snatching that neck. What a fast finish from McVeigh there. You could see Hanlon under a lot of pressure as soon as he hit the ground. Um,